If you take a bottle and blow air across the top of it in just the right way, it makes a sound. And this sound is due to vibrations of the air inside the bottle, which we call a standing wave. But how exactly does blowing air across the top of the bottle create standing waves inside there? To get an idea of how blowing across wind instruments like a flute makes vibrations, we're going to look at a very important idea in physics called Bernoulli's Principle. So the idea behind Bernoulli's Principle can best be described by thinking of air flowing through a tube. So you blow air uh, through this uh, tube in this side and it exits out this side. But as you can see, this particular tube changes its diameter becoming narrower right here. So the same amount of air must be going in at the left to come at the right every second. So if the tube gets narrower, the flow of air must speed up in this narrower part. And this is exactly what happens uh, to the water in a river. When the, uh, the river narrows, the flow of water speeds up. This is what's called the rapids. When the river widens again, uh, the rate of flow slows down. And what Bernoulli realized is that if the water speeds up going from left to right here, it must have accelerated. But as we know from Newton's laws, acceleration requires a net force pushing in the direction of the acceleration. And if you look at the walls here, they're only pushing inward. They don't push left to right. So we need a force, F net, which pushes to the right in this area. So therefore, Bernoulli correctly reasoned that there must be an internal force which is higher in the wide slow part of the tube and less in the narrow fast part of the tube. That internal force is what we call pressure and we can label I guess high H for high pressure over on the left and uh, L for low pressure over on the right. So this is Bernoulli's principle. I'll write it down. When the speed of airflow increases it is accompanied by a reduction in the internal pressure of the air. Conversely, if the flow, if the flow is down, pressure will increase. Bernoulli's principle has many applications. For example, it can be used to calculate the force of lift on an airplane wing. If a wing or any other surface is at rest, then the force of the air pressure on the top surface pushing down is equal to the force of the air pressure on the bottom surface pushing up. And these two forces cancel, and that's why we don't generally notice uh, the effects of air pressure around us. But as the wing moves, the air must flow above it and below it. And usually the top surface of the wing is curved while the bottom surface is flat. So the air flowing over has further to go along the curved surface than along the straight flat surface. And this causes the uh, air flow to be faster over the top surface than the lower surface. So by Bernoulli's principle, the air pressure is lower in the fast moving part of the fluid than in the slower moving part of the fluid. And so you've got more pressure pushing up on the bottom of the wing than pressing down on the top of the wing and this difference creates a net upward force which is lift. Bernoulli's principle is also important in studying the flow of water in water tanks. Uh, it's used in uh, carburetors, in internal combustion engines, and there's many, many more applications. But now let's return our attention to the flute and in particular this bottle. So I want to know how does Bernoulli's principle explain uh, how blowing air across the top of this bottle sets up standing waves in the air inside the bottle. Well, let's draw the bottle and let's assume that our lips are here and we've narrowed the flow of some air so that this fast air flow has reduced pressure compared to the air inside the bottle. We'll draw a little H uh, for high pressure inside the bottle and L for lower pressure outside the top. And what happens next is that this pressure difference causes the air to be pushed out of the bottle and join the flow of the moving air. But this flow of air out of the bottle has its own inertia, which causes it to overshoot equilibrium. So as it flows, we'll draw it again here, it empties the bottle a bit, reducing the pressure in the bottle until the pressure difference is reversed. And so we can draw this new situation as an H outside the top and an L inside the bottle. 
and this causes the airflow to reverse and start flowing back into the bottle. Again, this flow overshoots equilibrium, so we'll draw it again here. Once again, the pressure ends up higher in the bottle than above. So we end up back where we started with H inside and, the, and uh, L outside. Therefore, we have set up an oscillating pressure at the top of the bottle. These are going to be the first vibrations, which in turn drive a standing wave inside the bottle. The bottle acts as a column of air, which is open on one end and closed on the other. And this can support standing waves of certain frequencies. And this is the musical humming sound that you hear. So that's how Bernoulli's principle relates to non-reed instruments like the flute. There are similar explanations which explain reed instruments like the saxophone, for example.